Good morning. Good morning, Mir Klimp. Hope you and everyone else is having a great Wednesday so far, be it uh, beginning or ending or just in the middle. Let's go ahead and switch over to the main screen. And yes, camera still working. Oh, and that was almost a perfect drop too. Awesome. Okay. Let's take a look at what we got here. We are continuing to work on the, uh, it's not really a drop game, but it sort of feels like a little bit. It's the chat versus uh, streamer game. And if we look at our readme, we have just a little bit before we can move on to the polish. So create a heart entity that chat can spawn. Um, that means we need to create an instruction area that shows helping versus attacking me. And we need to display this number of streamer lives that I have left in the instruction area. Uh, and then we can move on to the polish stuff. So that'll be fun. Um, all right, so where do I want to actually put this? Let's go ahead and run this. And we'll take a look. So I'm thinking we want to get the streamer to be up here now, like all the way at the top. And probably like a subtitle that's just a like larger than this text, smaller than this text of you know ways like attack the streamer with the following commands. And then um, and then we want like another one down here, which is help the streamer. Um, I wonder, like, we, we probably want something that's going to give a little bit more data. So, like, fire column. Um, do I want, like, a description or want that to be, like, discovered? It might be fine to just to have this be discovered. Like, what it does. Yeah, I think I think that would be it. So, I just want up here move get the streamer up to the top. So that could be the first thing that we do. And that's going to be in our interface. Okay, so where we have this, here's the get the streamer. That's our title set to so get the dimensions. It's prop is it in the draw or are we actually setting its uh, location at some point in time? I think we're just drawing it okay so draw title yeah okay so we set the destination here uh self dot margin so if i if i make this like literally 5.0 or even zero like at the very very top that looks a lot better. It's a lot closer to the top. And so now I want a subtitle to go up here for the uh, the part where we're attacking the uh, attacking the player. What? Ah, oh, he decided to come and jump on my lap today. This is my new kitty cat. Ten weeks old, orange tabby. Clicking on all of the keyboard. I know, very, very sweet, very awesome. Very purry right now, too. 
and because it's morning wants to hang out with us because we ignored him all night while we slept. Uh, kitten's name is Zilby. Um, my wife came up with that name. Uh, let me... Nope, that's my T. Zilby with an X, so it's... Zilby, like that. Or actually, I think with an E. Zilby. I know, it was, it was a pretty good try, though. Go, go have fun. I've got a, a cat tree in the room now, so once, once he discovers that and starts playing around, we can get a camera pointed at it. But uh, until then, we'll just get uh, small amounts of uh, uh, Zilby shots when, when he decides to come in and hang out. He, uh, he went off with the um, to go hang out somewhere else now. But, all right. Let's see. We want now a attack the streamer with. So what does that mean for us? Uh, we're going to need another label. So we have this title. We probably want like a subtitle, like a attack subtitle. which is going to be text. And we can just do this right below this. So this is, let's see, so title set title. Gain title dimensions. Not sure where, let's see. You're doing instruction with this title width. Oh, okay, so everything was based on the title width because that was the, the widest. Um, I think then we can at any point of time really, we could just do this at the bottom here. Okay, let um, attack subtitle equals text new attack the streamer with the following commands. We'll see if this is too big. Uh, you need to be mute so that way I can then say attack subtitle dot we probably want to set bounds so that it, it properly, um, yeah, we're gonna wanna set bounds, I think, and set font. So let's set font first. Uh, font is gonna be font defaults, and then scale uniform, uh, and then, how we want to scale this up, let's just choose, what, what are we scaling the title to? Uh, 50, so if I do something like 30, uh, and then we want to set the bounds. Uh, the bounds is, specify rectangular dimension to try to fit are you a rectangle? You're zero dot zero. That's interesting. I was expecting this to be like a rect. Not zero dot zero. That type seems weird. Bounds P. Are you just a, okay, it's a point, I think. Maybe it's a point. So, 
So if I do a point to new, and then we just have the X, the X size and the Y size that we care about. So that's going to be the um, interface. Oh, it is if I click on set bound. Let's see. Looks like it's just it's a generic P. But then we need where where P is into a point two. So it's not a rect. It's a, uh, it's a point two. So do we have an interface? No. Um, what did we call this? Instruction width. So we're going to have instruction width. And then however high we want to make this. Uh, let's just make it double our height. So if we do like 60, that's zero. Uh, and then alignment. Uh, if we do align center like that, and then we take this attack subtitle and we store it in here. Um, okay, so this is draw title. We have these subtitles. We could just do a. Um, Probably best for us to to create these other little functions like this. So if I just copy you, this will now be draw tag subtitle. We get all of this stuff. We get these out of self dot attack subtitle dimensions and then attack subtitle uh, we place this at screen width minus title width minus up to margin why we want to put this down by let's see, 5 plus 50 so like maybe 60 down and then we'll call draw attack subtitle All right, let's see how this looks. I mean, it's it's not bad. It is not centered though. So I need to I need to deal with that. I need to center this properly, which really just means I need to make sure that I my bounds are correctly. I feel like the bounds are correct. I need to shift it over more. Like my math maybe is not correct. Uh, and then maybe move it down just a little bit more. I'm gonna put this over here so I can easily see. It's my draw, draw attack subtitle. Okay, so we get title width, title height out of self attack subtitle dimensions uh, okay so attack this parameters okay so we do the entire screen width minus the title width minus self dot margin okay so i think that's our problem i want to do screen width minus Um, minus self dot instruction width, I think. And then maybe if I just do that, and then let's go down more like 80 down, I think that will be happier. And this might look better. Are we even, we wouldn't even be using this then. Let's take a look. Sometimes I feel like this type of, um, yeah, okay, that looks a lot better. It's nice in the middle now. It's a little bit farther down. I 
and then we're gonna have these commands right underneath it. Then I'm gonna want the next one pretty much maybe a little bit farther down to give like a little bit of a gap. And then we're gonna have the heart. Okay, so after snake, we need, uh, let's see, so we want, we have a tech subtitle, let's also have in here, um, the help subtitle text. Uh, can you bring the commands down a bit to give a little bit more context. Um, yes, I closed the window. Let me go ahead and create this really quickly and then I'll, so like, okay, just more space, more space. Yeah, I think we can do that. Okay, say so help. It's actually before we add this in, I don't need to do that, I just need that. That way I don't need to work on that. Let's go ahead and run this real quickly so we can see what, we, let's actually drop, bring it down before we add more stuff. Okay, so we want more space between here. Okay, so drop you down a little bit more. That's going to be draw attack subtitle. Uh, we don't need you at all, turns out. I just need to, lots of magic numbers in here that I'm not super happy about. Because it's going to make changing these a lot worse. Okay, so with this one, I want to maybe start with like one, 125, let's say. That's gonna go into fire. But what are we gonna do about that? Well, change it, obviously. So that gives us this nice gap here. Attack the streamer with the following commands, and then we want to shift fire, sword, and snake down and heart significantly down. Uh, so this is 125. If we now go to command, uh, it's not commands, it's the main library. And we do have create sort of interface. And so here's where we have, okay, so large flame. It's 125 runs into this. If I do something like make you 300, 400, 500. Too bad you can't give them containers. Um, yeah, it's something that like a lot of people think I'm absolutely insane for, but HTML combined with uh, CSS is a super good way of like laying out any kind of graphical system and then giving styles to it. I really like that. And I, I kind of wish that I had that, like every time I have to do a, any kind of like programmatic graphical system, I just wish I had that. Then I can have that separate from the actual programming. Which would be, would be wonderful. So that, gives a nice little gap here. And so I want another gap before we add the help the streamer with the following commands. You know, colors would probably be really helpful here to like maybe change the color, like not have them all be white. Not sure exactly what I want to go with though. Give the eyes more focus, yeah. This definitely helps. Okay, so let's now add this next one. So this is gonna be help the streamer with the following commands. All right, 
So we're going to have uh, help subtitle, that's text. I'm going to come down here, and you're going to be exactly the same, except not. Um, you're going to be help. Help the streamer with the following commands. Uh, set you to 30 again. Set the bounds. It's going to be the same bounds, I believe. And then you're going to be the help subtitle. Uh, Bear Duda, good morning. Oh, you should rename you to not accidentally shadow you. Help subtitle. What kind of monster would help the streamer? I know. Uh, when I eventually uh, come back to here and like do a, a point system, although we have to do one more project in between that to see if I what I have access. Um, I would mostly to backstab them. Oh, so you know what interesting thing that you could do? You could set a trap where you drop hearts like right in the worst area. <laughs> like if you work with the rest of the stream, like if, if the entire chat gets together and like comes up with a strategy where like some people drop a bunch of flames down and then like there's a heart right over the flames, like, well, I can't get that now. <laughs> Otherwise I die, but I also need it because I'm gonna die. Uh, okay, so we do that, then let's create another function. You, you need to play Among Us type of sabotage. Uh, this, it's not draw, it's this one. Uh, help, okay, so then help becomes context, we get the screen height, we draw, this becomes help subtitle and we also want to pull this down by like 600 so this is going to be like 825 just something like that just throwing this out here don't know if that's actually a good idea or not uh draw help subtitle comes into here uh screen size I haven't played Among Us yet. Uh, there's been several people in like the various communities, so people at work got together and played it. I've watched a bunch of streams on it. It's been kind of fun what, looking. This is like going much faster or slower. I don't know. That's a little bit too far down. I want it to be like closer, closer to that. So maybe like 200 pixels up again. I think this was like 600. And like 700 would be here, and it's like, what did I put? Did I put like 825? Yeah, I put 825. So maybe, maybe 725? Where was the bottom one of these? 600 is the top of the heart instruction area I guess that's not a full hundred I could do 725 probably like 700 might look more right That looks pretty good. That's a nice, nice little gap here. Uh, and then, uh, oh, and actually, you know what? I realized it actually should be a little bit higher because the heart's gonna go down. So I need that. I need that route. I was gonna say like you weren't hitting me, but nope, you were hitting me. Oh, and it's interesting. You hit me once, but like it's uh, the iframe thing isn't working properly. But I think we have that under polish to figure that out. Someone won. Um, yeah, we broke that, which is now in polish to sort of fix that. 
Um, okay, so we need this actually up by at least 100 pixels. So back to you, you're probably, so like 600 is where we're starting the other thing. This could be like six, 650 maybe. So if I look at that, maybe a little bit, a little bit higher up, like maybe 600 would be fine for the start of this. So if I do that, then let's come over here and we'll find the heart column and we're going to put this. So we're starting at like 600. This could be maybe like 750. And I could see that an argument for that being like 775, just a little bit further down. I'm surprised that that like that chat in messages is coming through so well because that's um it that's once per frame that like the uh the sword is over it that it's sending that message. So I want you down by like another 25 more. It is pretty spammy. So 75 down there for that. And I think that that helps out. Uh, so let's run this just to verify. Yeah, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I wanna make the sword hit on enter. Well, there's not really a big a big like sword hit on enter thing. Although I might want to make, I could make the sword disappear the same way we have the heart disappear when it hits. That could be interesting. But um, it's also interesting that it can be hit by the sword multiple times. But okay, so the interface part I think is done now. We, we have a better looking interface. It's not perfect looking. Um, Oh, that's what you mean, um, have... I want to make the sword hit on enter only. Oh, and then the sword should trigger on enter and then the sword should die and like disappear from the arena. Yeah, that was the reason why we had, um, what was it called, iframes initially, and we accidentally broke the iframe uh, uh, system. But I could, I could definitely do it where, like, that would allow me to remove, I wouldn't need an iframe system anymore. Um, okay, so. What happened to the sub, the rest subreddit, it burns the eyes. Um, I have not looked... I, I mostly look at subreddits, uh, like the rest subreddit on my, um, on my phone. So, and like I use an app for that. So I don't actually get, uh, like whatever CSS things they do, like make it, make it change. Uh, so I have no idea what it looks like now. Um, iframes, what was that? So initially the idea was that I was going to have iframes, uh, invincibility frames. Um, many games actually use something like this, where when you get hit, uh, you now can't be hit again for a certain small number of time. It could be tied to an animation, it could be tied to some kind of staggering state, and it could just be tied to something else to sort of like help help the player not like you know not not get killed too quickly. Uh, like for example, um, in Dark Souls. 
when you dodge, there is a point during the dodge that you have iframes. But not all of the dodge. Like, there's some little area of it. Uh, and I think also when you get hit, kind of a little bit. And so, like, speedrunners take advantage of that all the time. So, like, okay, I'm going to get hit, and then I can just walk through the enemy. Um, so let's see, we have this, but I may not need iframes if I have the thing, uh, go away. And just, like, disappear upon hitting me. It also makes things a little bit easier. Okay, so. Looking at that, that gives me, the instruction area is good, let's go ahead and open up our readme. So this creates the instruction area. Now, where do I want to put um, where do I want to put the streamer lives left? Maybe down here. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe I want to go somewhere down here. Uh, lives left, like it could be the number, colon, lives left, and that will be displayed right here. Ooh, um, that would be probably our player draw system. We only have a game object draw system right now. And I think, I think the player is sharing this. We could, it could also be part of just, if we extract out the player from the game objects, like if we just do a query for them every, every frame. Or, 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 we use, we have this player life system. We have hit, is alive, and update. Um, and gain life, and we have that, the count of the lives left. If I do a message, I guess it would be a message. If I do a channel, so I can send events, I can send an event like lost life. When I lose the life. Yeah, so you can see I have these iframes here and I'm actually using the iframes. Uh, it's just not making me fade out anymore. I think we want something like this. Um, okay. I want how how do I want to display this? Uh, we could have like in the main in the main library. We have in draw down here. Update, okay, here's draw. We get the game objects. We have interface draw. We could track what the life is. We could have the interface constantly draw out what the, the lives left are. Okay, so how do we know? We know when we get hit, that reduces our lives.
when we create the interface, we could pass it a channel and that could store a reader inside and for our player, create the player, for our life system, we could pass the sender into the player life system. And so every time we lose a life, it could send the new number of lives that we have left to, okay, to, to that. All right, that, that sounds good. Which means we can also set what the player's lives are in here. So we can, we can start here, say a const um, lives. This can be a U8 equals, we're gonna start with three. Um, and that means with our interface, we're gonna start by giving it the lives. And so let's start with like, just by, this is the default like lives that we begin with. And then we'll update that over time. Okay, so now we go to our interface new. We're gonna have player lives left. Uh, that's gonna be a U8. Player lives left is a U8. And just store that away. And then down here in draw, so we're gonna want another function here. Draw uh, live player lives. Uh, and I, I don't know if we need anything else with that. To, um, we'll need to create a result. We do remember that if we have to create a, if we have to create some kind of to, to do for that, if we have to create some kind of, um, new mesh every single frame we run into major performance issues so that's a that's a problem so i wonder if this is going to cause hitching and if that's the case do we want to like cheat and like pre-create a bunch of numbers uh like one through one through nine or something like that uh, and then we start with three and then we reduce down. That might be that might be interesting. We can try creating them here and just sort of see how it how it feels. So if I draw the player's lives left, we have those lives in self. So I want to first create our mesh. So it's gonna be lives text. Um, text new, uh, we're gonna have to format okay, lives left, gonna be self dot player lives left, okay, so that gives us that. We want to, and I think it's like the font, like really setting the font to make it bigger is pretty expensive. You can make the lives hearts. Oh, that's a good idea because we can reuse that image. Although I don't think I have, I, I can just set the image. Like if we have players lives left, and then if I store the, um, like just an image in here, which is gonna be the, like a heart 
like a life image. Uh, which is going to be an image. I think I can just do this here. So we're going to be um, life image is graphics image. Actually, I already got that. I could just do image new um, context path. Okay, so path is I think heart dot png. Oh, and that's it. Uh, and then your result. So question mark. That makes you happy. Set. Okay, so so I like this. Um, which means that I can also up here. So we have lives left. We have the life image. We also need like that the little title for it. So uh, player lives left. Um, subtitle essentially. Uh, you're going to be text. We can come down here to where we have our subtitles and do this one exactly again. So you're going to be player lives subtitle. Is that what I named it up here? No, players live left. Um, okay, so this is going to be player uh, streamer lives left. Set the font, set the bounds. Player lives left subtitle, so that gets saved in here. So drawing this, drawing the player's life left, we're first going to draw the subtitle. So we're not going to have text like this. Uh, I think all we need to do is just draw it. Um, so this is going to be now. What are you? Okay, these are game results. So I want this to be a game result. Uh, we're going to do graphics. Draw context, uh, a reference to the drawable, so self dot player's life left subtitle, um, drop ram uh, new, and then inside of here we can do a dot uh, dest, um, give it a point to new, um, and then x. So the X for this is going to be, uh, we're going to need the screen size, aren't we? Screen size. Uh, this is going to be screen size dot zero. So that's the full width minus self dot instruction width. Okay, so that gives us like the left side of that. And then the Y down is, uh, we want this to pretty much be like the screen size plus a little bit. So we're gonna do screen size dot one minus whatever height this is gonna be. Let's just go with like 100.0 up. So if I do that, Um, to do, what are you upset about? Drop param. Oh, I want, okay, you are, you need to go inside of here. Is 
There's that. Okay, there we go. Um, I need more sharks. Um, yeah, I don't have any sharks. What would a shark do in this case? A shark instead of a sword, it just flops around. I mean, when I come up with the the like sequel to this, which is exactly the same game, but played underwater, um, then we can get sharks. Sharks and anchors and other things. And if too many sharks get launched, you can have it turn into a Sharknado. Oh, of course. You know, and we can put laser beams on the shark's heads. Okay, so this is drawing the top, like the title of it. Let's see how this looks. Uh, I'm just gonna place this with an okay. And then we're good to go here. Uh, we need to actually call draw player uh, draw players lives left. Okay. Um, and what are you upset about? Uh, players lives left and life damage. So yeah, I'm not using that yet, but that's fine. Let's run this and see where that is. Um, where you can lose your hand and gain a chainsaw. Oh, of course, all the, uh, every, all the things. Um, okay, so here we have streamer's life left, and then we want this heart, essentially, um, to figure this out. Oh, no, look at that. We've, we've run into performance issues. Um, let's try, so I do, I do know that GG Easy has some problems with, uh, images and other things in, um, what is it in, in debug mode? Let's try in release mode to see how much better it is. It shouldn't have, but yeah, like I know that that GGZ sometimes has um, debug mode problems. No, it looks like we're still having. So is it just adding this or is it me loading the image i feel like we're just now have too many of these i feel like i don't think i'm loading the frame like the image every single frame we're loading the image at um when we create Because you can see here, I'm loading. I'm loading this image right here, when I'm creating the life image. Uh, and I'm not using it. Down here, I'm not even using the image. I'm just drawing the player's lives left here. And I'm not even like changing the font or doing anything else with that. I'm just. Um, I'm just setting a new destination. But like this last thing, this was this was the big, you know, nope, we're we're done. Like GGEZ is done with me. Uh because if I take this out, save that. Uh we're fine again. Yep. We are totally fine with that. 
So, can I show the FPS? Yes, I can f get the FPS displayed somewhere. Um, although, that's, that's fun. Um, let's see, update, here and update. It's really in draw. Let's make it on top of everything else. Uh, we need to, we could just print this out down here. Can show where you load the image for the heart message and whatnot, where you update it and draw it. So first we are clamp. Let's do the, um, the frames per second. So we're going to get, uh, let FPS equals the timer. Uh, FPS context like that, uh, that gives me an F64 and I'm just going to print line, uh, frame FPS. Now this is average frames per second. So over like the last 200 frames, um, FPS like that. So that will give us the frames per second. So let's go ahead and run this really quickly. This is release mode. Um, and we can see that I'm hitting close to around 50. Yeah, about at 60 frames per second. And if we drop something, it, it basically doesn't do anything at all. Like that's not, that's not causing any problems except drawing all of these is really tanking the frames per second. That's kind of fun. Um, okay, so that's our frames per second. If we also want to go take a look at where I'm loading loading that. So um, here in the struct interface, I'm loading the life image here uh, in the new function. So that happens once. That's a problem you kept losing a frame a second on that screen, yeah, I did. Um, I think that's because on that game over screen, I'm uh, I'm recreating the the text and the font every single frame. Um, but I don't really care about the I don't really care about the the performance at that point. Now something else, and I think I can do this with Control Shift. Yeah. Um, so in case you didn't know this, you can do uh, control shift escape and that gives you the task manager without having to do the entire control alt delete in Windows, which is amazing. So much nicer than, than doing that. So if we run this, let's go ahead and start. Let's try not release mode. And here's the get the streamer game. We're using 2.9% uh, GPU, 6.3% CPU. So we're not, uh, and we're taking 41 megabytes of memory, which is not terrible. Uh, and it's really hard for us to see what the, uh, uh, the, the FPS is because I have those other things that are, um, I think it's like 44. And like, it won't even let me. This looks like 44 to me. Uh, let's quit. Yeah, it's 44 or so frames per second. And I wasn't hitting, it wasn't terrible. I was hitting like 6% 6, 6 CPU, 
and like 2.5% GPU. So I'm not like pushing the computer. Like that's not the problem. The problem is me not overloading GPU or CPU. Or even memory. Memory never even got even close to 50% uh, usage for the entire computer. Um, so, um, you were asking where I was, uh, where I was loading it. Here in the main library, up at the top, when I instantiate the game, I create the interface right here. And so at this point of time, before the game even starts and we have like the first frame, we've loaded up that heart image. I'm thinking that what would be better to do is actually just create the, um, just like use something like GIMP to create that, that side like create the instruction area. And that would help out a lot. So if I open up GIMP, Uh, what do I need you to be in interface? Uh, so, okay, we have instruction width, which is whatever the title width is. Uh, so you know what might be nice is if I just dump this out. Uh, instruction width. So if I if I find out what this is, so let's do a, a print line. Instruction with instruction with, uh, and then let's just go ahead and panic. So that way we just get that right away. 592. 592. And then we know the height of it is the entire height of the entire game. Okay, so I don't need you anymore. So 592 width. Um, height is going to be, I think this is going to be set in main. Ten, 1080. Okay, so 592 by 1080. Okay, so that gives us this here. How can I zoom in more? Okay, so then I want, uh, is this the right, we probably want to set the background of this. Can I do something like this? Whatever that background that we have, where's that eyedropper? I don't have it running. Let's get this running so I can grab the same. Oh, wait, wait, we have the same cut. We, we know what the color is because we set that in here. In interface. Somewhere. Instruction background is this from RGB. Oh man, I don't know what that is. It's like hex for the U8s. Zero X08. I wonder if GIMP can handle that. So can I say, I 
I don't think I can set hex in here, can I? Uh, let's go take a look at what we have. I know it's like a it's like a not super dark blue, but like a decently dark blue. Like if I just choose something like this, say okay. Come back to you. We can just say this is our background. Then we come to you. And we want you to be with this. Do I want it to be white? Try it. Um, okay, 83278. All right, we can try that again. 832, so your 8, 32, 78. Okay, there we go. This is, this is that color. Then, back to white. We want the... Get the streamer game move the background uh, how do I make you I guess I want you to be less big where do I set the font stuff This interface is so small. Let's see, Windows, can I see like the text? Center, I guess that's fine. Mode normal over here. Is there anything over here to look at? Not that I'm seeing. Can I? Oh, that doesn't help. Uh, if I go back to A mode. Okay. This is where I can now set. I want you to wrap. Fixed. Do something like that. Get the streamer game. I probably want to reduce your size down. There we go. Is there an easy way to align? Where I could then say like, hey, just like, like for example, if I put you over here, can I also say like, just align to the center of the canvas? It's like image, not transform. Uh, I guess it's not layer. Tools, maybe? Okay, align. Q. So that gives me this alignment stuff. I want you... Uh, okay, relative. Wait a second. I'm not selecting anymore. How do I select it again? Like I no longer have what I'm trying to hit. Okay. There we go. Now that, that aligns it to the center. Okay, so if we have if we have that, um, then we look at our game, we want the attack the streamer with. So that's gonna be another one of these. So if I do something like this. 
and I say attack the streamer streamer with the following commands. Uh, we want you to be like 30, let's say. I want you to be significantly smaller than that, so you need to be... Oh, this set hasn't done anything at all. There we go. That's nice and smaller. Whoa. Where's my select? Oh, rectangular select tool. I guess I just do that. Whoa, no, that's not what I want. Where's the one thing where I can just click it to select it? That zoom, alignment tool. Did I like take it away somehow? Selection tools. Um, what application is this? This is GIMP. It's a free Photoshop replacement type tool. I want just, I guess there's free select, foreground select, fuzzy select, my color, intelligent scissors. I don't know if that's what I want. Oh no, that's definitely not what I want. Um, you know of it, never used it, you've been using Figma for things like this. Oh man, I don't have Figma and I've never looked at it. I've heard good things about it though. I used to have a little, there, there was a tool up here where I could just select. Um, and I don't know what happened to it. Was it a move tool? Was it this? That's what it was, okay. So, if I change you, so first of all, we do Q. Okay, it's move. No, that's the wrong move. Move, no. I'm moving the background. Do I need to, okay. Do I need to lock these? How do I lock? That didn't lock it. Looks like it's requiring you to click. Yeah, I wanna lock the, um... no, I don't wanna, visible, oh, linked, I don't wanna do that. I wanna lock the pixels. Lock position and size. I don't know how, like what button you click to lock it. You can move the text while holding alt. So hold on. There, now I can, now I can move this easily because I locked the background, which I may have screwed the background up. I don't think it's like centered anymore. Uh, so if I, if I do something like this, and I now hit Q. Uh, oh, wait, I have to select it. And then I can Q. No, it's not the right type of, wait. I don't think that's what I want either. Yeah, so if I click this thing, I have to click on one of the pixels of this and then I can move it around. Uh, I forget how I even got, it seems like it's too big for my canvas. You can move the text while holding Alt. 
holding alt now doesn't want me to do it anything. I can move it while not holding alt. I think that's because I'm in move mode. It's interesting. I think while editing the text. Okay, so if we go back into text edit mode, we're going to hear so alt. Oh yeah, that, that definitely works. So then if I do Q, no, that adds that in. Um, so that goes center there. If I make you just a little bit smaller. And I want to align, align this. That's not doing anything with me. I think while editing the text, I can move it. Yeah, I was hoping that I could figure out how to align it to the entire screen or the entire canvas. I don't know how to do that though. Uh, your size is 43, if we make you 30. No, I need to select everything. Oh, and then, then you are 30. Okay, so you're fine. And there's alignment tool. Yeah, clicking these do nothing. We have first item image. It doesn't do anything. Selection. Active layer. Active channel. Active path. None of that does the thing I want to do. Um, and so here's the here's the layer that I'm on. It's attack. So like here's the get the stream of game. Here's this. Uh, add blend space. Yeah, I don't see a. I don't see anything to like align it here. Mode normal. Oh, don't need to do anything of that. Okay, so Okay, don't know how I got don't know how I got that to happen, but now we got it centered. Okay, cool. I'm in like there's a little finger pointing like that. I'm in the align tool. Also in group move. I don't know how I got there. Um, okay, so attack the streamer with the following commands. I now want to pull in an image. Is that an import? Like, how do I how do I add an image in here? Because I I don't want to open a new file. Maybe I can do that. So if I open, let's go find, let's see, documents, code, books, builds, Rust workspace, target, debug, resources. Uh, so here's this large flame. Yeah, this opens up in a completely new Okay, can I like copy and paste you? Um, when you use GIMP, you forget everything you manage right after. I I believe you. So if I take you and I want to, I think these are 64 by 64. So if I come right into center, that's 
Oh, that's like 26x. Uh, where's the where's the size of the canvas? Let's do image canvas size. Okay, so you're 104 by 26, so I want you to be 26 wide. Resize. That kills that. Okay, so that's fine. I want to select you. I want to copy you, come over here and paste you in. Oh wait, I think I did the wrong copy command. Copy, paste, okay, so there, here you are. We'll go into the move commands, move you right here. I'm not, okay, so in, in a line, Okay, I've somehow got the little finger thing back. And if I do that and... Mm, well, okay, that doesn't make you go into the, the middle. Like I was kind of hoping that it would. Uh, okay, so I select it and then I can then I can make it uh, go into the center, okay? Then I want to make this a little bit bigger. So if we go back into this command, uh, can I make this pasted layer? From here, can I make you bigger or do I wanna just sort of ignore that? And just said like, you know what? We're we're good for it this second. Um, and then I want to essentially take this, attack the streamer. I want to duplicate this layer. Go into text mode. Uh, this would be help the streamer with the following commands. Okay, move you down here in general. We'll go, okay, so got that. Now you need to go down a little bit because now we need more, we need more text. We need things like, um, Okay, uh, this is gonna be fire uh, column, like that. And you go, you go underneath that in general. And uh, you're surprised you're not doing this in HTML. I, yeah, that's probably, probably be faster <laughs> just to do this in HTML. I keep on thinking like, oh, of course this is gonna be faster, right? Like, how could it be slower? Uh, I think the other one was sword column. Design in HTML, yeah. And then like save that as an image. Cause like in Firefox or Chrome, you can just save things. Although that's as PDF, isn't it? That's not a JPEG. Uh, so that might be a problem. Um, screenshot, that seems low quality. Uh, you can open up a PDF in GIMP, really? Okay, so then if I want to open our sword. Uh, here's our sword. So I want to take you. Can I scale you up here? Transform tools, scale. I want you to go up, 
to like, I don't know, 120. I should probably have also changed, okay, so let's undo that. We need to change the um, image canvas size to like 120 first and 120. Resize layers. Whoa, don't. Okay. Stop moving. Then I want to scale. Okay, 120, 120. Am I not selecting the one thing? I like see the sword in there. I don't doesn't want to do it. Maybe maybe I should do this. Ah. Bah. Design HTML. Is that that's sounding better and better and better all the time. Hmm. <laughs> Silly, silly, silly. I, I, here, here I thought GIMP would just be like, oh, it's going to be easy. It's going to be nice to just do that in like some photo editor like this. So the idea is that if I do this as a single image, I can load a single image in and then display that. And then that will be performance wise much better than creating all this text separately and doing it. Or even something like LibreOffice word processor would probably be better. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know that would be crazy. That's crazy that that's true. Um, maybe like Figma would be good too. to like learn, learn that and just like add that in there. Um, like anything, anything other than this, um, because like this is just, I don't know. It's just, it seems to be as, as paint programs aren't great for this kind of layout. Yeah. That's what I'm noticing. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm noticing. Okay, so I'm I'm going to save this. Just I don't know why. I'm gonna save this as uh, work in progress. Um, I'm gonna call this the like instructions, uh, and I'm just gonna throw this on my desktop. Save you, and I might come back to this and tweak it, uh, but I think. I think I'm really just going to do this in HTML and CSS. I think you're right. Um, stacking, I think that's just going to be so much easier because like text is easy to um, to center there and we can load up the, um, the images uh, pretty easy. Although I might need to cut this down in, um, in, in GIMP here, but even that will be like not that hard. Um, and then we can set like the height of it. We can save it as a PDF, open that in GIMP, and then export that as a, a JPEG or a PNG, and then import that into the game and then display that. Okay, that's going to be our plan. I may or may not do that off stream. It really depends on the timing that I have today. Um, I do have to stay late at work tonight and do a um, an offsite. Uh, oh, Figma's free. Figma's free. Let's go take a look at that. Yeah, Figma might be good. I, I know some people really say they like that. Uh, why does Figma want access to virtual reality devices? How do I get it? Do I have to sign up to download it? Try Figma for free. Oh, I have to create an account. Okay. I know it's, it's, it's interesting which things like want to get, uh, uh, to get access to stuff. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have to get a an account. So I'll I'll sign up for this 
Uh, let's see. I might be able to do this. Are you going to ask for my personal information? Hold on. Secret stuff. Uh, do, do, do. We're opening. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new account, new login called Figma. All right, what do you need? Uh, you need my email. Um, and password. Save. Save that. Come on. Oh. Really, Figma? You claim to be designers. They don't allow me to paste a password into the field? What? Come on. You should know better than that. That's like a security problem. All right, well now I need to display you there so I can manually type you in. Hope that I get this right. Create account. Uh, don't save. Tell us about myself. My name is Berserker. Totally a normal name. Uh, what kind of work do I do? I do software development. I do not agree to join your mailing list. Create account. I know, manual typing. All right. You're not going to do anything crazy now, like drop me into a profile page. Welcome. Give your team a name. OK, so I think I can share my screen again. Main. Uh, welcome to Figma. Give your team a name. This is Zerker. Or I guess this would be Brooks Builds. Choose a plan. Um, free. No. Even though it probably should go through some sort of tutorial, uh, if I go in here and I say, um, all right, so if I want a background for this, uh, so layers, I don't know if I want the rectangle for this or if I want to just set the, oh, background, here it is, um, hex. RGB, what did we decide this was? This was something like 8, 32, 76 something? Close to that? Close to that, 78. Oh, I, was so, I was so close. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mir Clint. Um, all right, so we have that. Can I also set what the size of this is? File, ooh, I can export probably as an image. Uh, let's make this full size. I don't know how to set this to be uh, like the size of my my page here. I don't know if that matters either.
Okay, so design, uh, can I set? Okay, so dest uh, desktop, whoa. Hold on. I didn't want desktop like that, hold on. So can I set you? No, I can't like configure you. Big community. The, all these numbers on the side, uh, I don't seem to be able to set them, which would be really nice. Because I want like very short X, very tall Y. I don't know why I can't customize this. Do I have to like go and figure out how to add a new device? Frame and slice. Oh, do I have to do something like that? I need to, to rotate. It's like if I do, what was it? Like five, 500 something by 1080. So the page is infinite, you want to make a frame and then add content to that. So this would be like a frame then, right? So if I if I did something like this, it's like 1080. I think I think this is right. Oh, I can set you what you are now. Oh, wit. Okay, so what did we decide you were? You we were Where did that that print go? 592. So you're at 592 by 1080 not 0.8 like that okay so here you go with this uh that slice is single similar but the other tool with a slice is called frame there's moving scale well i don't know how to get back okay frame uh but frame i don't know how to oh frame i can create like that okay i get it so slice, delete you. Here we go. With this frame, I can now set your width to be 592. I said 592 by 1080. Okay, there we go. This gives me a frame like this. Um, this is fine. I want to fill you with 83278. Um, this other background can then just be like black. Yeah, okay. Now we can see our frame here. Uh, now I can start adding some text. So if I do this, we're going to say get the streamer game. Uh, we're going to want to set you to not be black. Let's make you white. Let's make you not 12 point font. Um, let's make this like 50. Oh, look how easy that is to center. I move you up to the top like this. Center. Oh, look at that. So much easier. So much easier. Okay. Then, um, to get the streamer game, if I want like another text here, this is going to be um, tack the streamer with the following commands. 
Um, or maybe this could be command to attack streamer. So then I want to select you, make you white. Bring you into center. Okay, you're a little bit too big. Oh, you didn't, that didn't make you. How do I make you go multi-line? That's how. And I want you centered. So center like that, but also center like that. There we go. Um, all right. This uses a CS engine under the hood, uh, so it should feel familiar from here. Yeah, this is this is like really nice um, and super easy to get into and, and going with. Now, the the next big thing is bringing in an image. So if I wanted to show off, hey, you want to you want to come up again? No. Nope. No, he's going to go hang out at the bottom of the tree. Uh, okay, so what is next? Um, drag and drop onto the frame is the easiest to add an image. Okay, so let's go ahead. Find. Okay, so here's. Where's my sword? Oh, hey. Nice for you to join me. Got my little new kitty cat. Can hang out in my lap. Or walk across the keyboard. That works too. Um, around 10 weeks old, we just uh, got him from a rescue. Uh, on Monday, uh, an orange an orange tabby. Looks suspiciously like Ben Heck's new kitten. Are my, am I living with Ben Heck? No, I'm not. All right. I don't know if you'll be able to to hear his. Um, uh, ah, I don't know if you'll be able to hear his um, purring. He's pretty loud. All right, so what am I doing? What was I doing? I forgot. Um, we're looking for my, oh, the flame. We want the fire. Those are my glasses. I should put those on my face. All right, let's go. Uh oh. Uh, I don't know what video that was. That was from a while ago. Um, okay, so we want documents, code, books, builds, best workspace, target, debug. Resources. All right, so we're going to start with the large flame and sort of see how this goes and see if I can get a piece of this off. So if I do that, we bring this out here. And in CSS, there's normally a way to get just a piece of it. So can I? CX and Y, I want that. Constraints. I don't want don't want to drop shadow, no. Don't want no, don't want to do that. How do I uh cut down 
It can't be as easy as this, right? No. I can do all sorts of cool things with that, like that. Um, Positrondix, hello. Good morning. All right, so I want to cut this. I want to cut it off and only see one of those things. Um, so I can't set the width of this, right? Like if I do like 64. Ooh, I think that does work. All right, let's undo this. Okay. So width, 64. Oh no, that didn't cut it off. That just made everything smaller. What are you, rotation, corner radius. You found a site that shows how to crop. True effects, export. Fill. I need color styles. Background prototype inspect. I guess I could set CSS. Uh, oh, starting frame. Constraints. Can I right click it? It'll do anything. So select layer, okay. No, I don't see it. No. You can have you can have the little deck. Um try to search at Google Figma crop image. Take a screenshot and uh, jspaint.app i could do that i could also like I, I was able to crop it out using um gimps like that's one thing i could do uh to do... okay so let's do this is figma crop image Image, okay, select the layer you'd like to adjust. In the fill section of the properties panel, click on the image thumbnail to open the fill menu. Click on the fill mode drop down and select crop. Okay, so if I did, oh, I've got you both open here. Fill, crop. Well, wait, this is, this is the image. I have the image to crop. Whoa, that like rotates it. I want to crop this image. Cool, I can do interesting things that I don't need. Oh, that's how to crop right there. Hey. Um, how do I zoom way in so that I can see what I'm doing? Like that. Okay. So there we go with that. Um, I want... To now save you. Okay, perfect. Back to normal. We want to make you 
centered like that. And now we can make you... Come on, don't rotate. Now we make you bigger. And center you. Okay, easy. Um, of course, this goes down and we have another text, which is going to be uh, hash fire column. There we go. We want to make you uh, white. Uh, make you slightly smaller. So let's bring you to like 30. Or maybe this could be even like 20. Not two. Two is maybe just maybe a little bit too small. That's just just a guess. Just just a thought. Okay, so if I do if I do that, you I want you to be maybe like 30. So we do something like that. Oh, I like that. Then I get the same exact space here. Fire column like that. Uh, and then we can do another text. Um, I think I think this is gonna be this is gonna be good. So if I take you and let's try exporting. Let's just see what happens. Um, can I export you? Use a type button. Wait, no, no, I don't want. Can I select the entire frame? Copy as SVG. No, I don't want that. Okay, so file, export. Huh, okay. Select everything and then file export. Why, that's going away. Control shift E is what I want. Okay, so zero. No selected layers have export settings. Click plus in the export section of the properties panel to add one. Oh, that's my problem. So click on this. Properties. Uh, nope, don't want to click. Design. Export. I want to export as a PNG. Export frame one. Preview. Okay. So then if I come here and do file, export. Frame this, export you. It saves you down here, so I click save. Uh, that puts it into my downloads. Frame one, and here this is what it looks like. So if I take this frame one and I rename you to uh, instructions, um, I should be able to like throw this into the game and have it work. Just fine. Cool. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, I would love to continue this now and actually get it into the game, but I am way over time. Uh, I normally stop the stream around 8.30, but I decided to go extra. This Figma thing, I think is gonna work out really well. So thank you so much for that. Um, and also with our, our special, special super awesome guest, um, Zilby today, who is now purring, so I don't know. 
I don't know if I can hear hear him. Um, but he also wants to play, so I'll be able to get to I'll get some play time with uh, with him before my stand up before I actually start working. No, no playing with my hand. I don't have my toy with me right here. Um, okay, so with that, I'm gonna do a super fast, awesome exit of the stream. So I'm gonna switch over to the ending. Do, 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 do. Ending screen. Uh, thank you everybody for stopping by and uh, and watching this. Um, uh, I also thank you so much for showing me Figma. I think this is gonna be so much better of a design system than trying to use GIMP or any other photo photo editing system. Um, I'm doing these streams every single weekday morning at um, around 7 a.m. Mountain Time to around 8.30 a.m. Um, before I have to go off to work. Um, and then um, I'm working on, uh, <laughs> I'm distracted by the kitty cat. Um, I'm working on this game on Monday through Thursday. On Fridays, I'm doing, in, I'm learning uh, introduction to essentially WebAssembly and sort of figuring that out. And then on Sundays, I'm creating an introduction to Rust course. Um, so stop on by for whichever of those you would love to see. Otherwise, I'd be happy to have you in the VODs. Um, anyways, follow me here on Twitch or follow me on Twitter for those awesome notifications. And with that, I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.